it's me, it's you, helping you build a career you love. Today I've got a special lesson on five beliefs and actions to help improve your job search success. I think you're going to like it, and I can promise you this goes well beyond job searching. These are five really important creeds that I think will change your life. If you're here with me live, get in the chat, say hi, let me know who you are, let me know where you're from, let me know what you need, put some question marks in front of your questions so I can find them, and and if you are in my boot camp or you are in my leadership program or you're newly in my resume writing workshop, give me a hashtag, let me know. I always love to give you a shout out. And if you're watching me on the recording, say hi to me in the comments below the video. I am... Uh, I am really looking forward to this one. And I want you to know that I'm gonna share some things that I think are very transformative, not just in your job search, but in your entire life. And these are five creeds that I have been practicing for many, many years. And I can't wait to share them with you today. And I hope as we go through this that you objectively interpret what I'm sharing, but they are yours to subjectively adopt and put into practice in any way you want that will help your job search and your life. But all of them, I believe to be true. I believe to be true. And I think, I hope I get a lot of head nods up and down as we roll through this. So let's get right into it. And then for those of you that are with me live, after I run through the teaching portion, we'll go into a lengthy q and I got a few hours for you today. I'm really looking forward to this. All right. Let's get into this. All right, now, it's, it's, uh, as, as I'm shooting this live, it's nearly November. Maybe on the recording you're watching this, it's November. This is the best time of year to job search. A lot of people are, and just with what's going on with our current health scare, there are a lot of people out of work. So you're going to have to compete with a lot of other people who are also looking for jobs. So th- these five creeds I'm going to share with you are ways that I think you can elevate your game beyond all the tactics that you're going to use, although we are going to cover some some actions and some tactics today. All right, let's get into it. First one, now I got five. One's a prelude, one's on influence, one's on patterns, one's on attitude, and one's on faith. Don't worry, I'm not going to preach, at least not in that way. But I want to talk about the prelude. This is something that I wish all of you would have done, but it's never too late to start. But I think about all of you that are probably here with me that have took time out of the middle of your day that I love <laughs> I love to see all of you, you're hurting a little, right? You're hurting a little. You, you, want, you want to find that new job or maybe you want to accelerate that career a bit more. There's one thing that I always tell people. This is your prelude. Great brands heal quickly. Great brands heal quickly. What do I mean by this? I want you to... I want you to really focus on this because when, when you think about it, have you ever like bought something, maybe it broke, or but you knew it had just such a track record or it had all these glowing reviews or it just looked the part? You probably jumped right back on the horse and bought another one, right? Hey, the Weber, the Weber grill goes out. That's okay. I'm going back to the store. I'm going to buy, buy another one. It's a Weber buy a Weber and call it a day kind of thing, right? Whatever it is, anything that breaks, a product, a service, anything of that nature. Now, why am I talking about this? Well, we have this expression in sales that by the time you realize you need to prospect, meaning I have to go out and find somebody who could potentially buy what I'm selling, it's usually too late. That's the expression, right? By the time you realize you need to prospect, it's too late, meaning you should have been prospecting week, days, weeks, months ago, right? It's the same analogy as when's the best time to plant the tree? 20 years ago. When's the next best time? Now, today. So I want to talk about you and your brand. If your brand is shiny and it is intact and you are 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 building it along the way, you keep it maintained, you keep it shiny, you keep it squeaky, you keep it clean and and glowing, you're going to have a much, much easier time. Now, I realize that a lot of you might be thinking, well, hey, I, I'm job searching, I, I, I didn't build my brand yet, or I need to, I want to change careers, I haven't built my brand yet, or something of, 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 of that nature. Well, fact matter is that you got to get in motion and you got to do it and there's no time like the present. And I want to tell you a little story here about uh, about something I did right before 
I, I opened up MileWalk, my executive search firm. I was working with an organization. It was a consultancy. It was about 120 people at the time I joined. And when I joined, I was coming off where I had just taken a year off of work. I was, you know, cavorting around and having fun. I took the year of Andy and I, I was getting back into the workforce and I should have been a little more selective in, in, in my entry point uh, than I was. But regardless, I had this nice job and they wanted me to be on the sales team. And when I got there and we started having early sessions on this, like I'm, I'm talking like on the first day I started and I, I was asking them a little bit more about, you know, what our pitch is, what, what's our brand, what are we known for, like and the insiders, insiders. And the, you know, the, the C chief operating officer said to me, well, we're, we're great problem solvers. And I said, well, what? That's, that's not a brand. That, everybody's a great problem solver. That's not going to differentiate you. And you, you think about yourself and competing with, with, with all of these people that are out there right now. How are you going to differentiate yourself? Well, what I did, and you can take a page out of, out of this book, is I said, well, okay, hang on. What is it that I have uh, in at our disposal that that I, I can use that we have as a company that we've done and I looked at what we did I looked at what the future problems were going to be I took my best estimation of where the market was going and what organizations were going to need I reached out to people I interviewed them as to what business problems they were having and I came back to my management team and I said there's three areas that we should focus on do we have any projects that we've ever worked on that are related to these three areas and we had a little couple you know nothing major nothing like you know we helped a hundred cu customers things like that but I took what we had I packaged it up and we got it in play we started marketing it digitally we started marketing it physically we started mailing uh, we, we had marketing techniques where we were mailing things th to people but the point was I took what we had and I repurposed it and repackaged it so that it made me look more knowledgeable and you might call that an illusion but if you start to do that with things that you have you're you're going to be way ahead of the game when somebody lands on your LinkedIn profile they look at all these things that you've done or they've looked at all these presentations that you have or they look at some of the long form posts now there's a million ways to do this and if you are somebody who is simply changing jobs at, uh, via changing companies right you're, you're keeping the same function but you're doing it with another organization you already have working knowledge of what you're an expert on now without I don't want to get into all the branding stuff because I spent two hours and 34 minutes with you a month or so ago where I taught you how to build your personal brand. I went into nauseating detail on all of this. So I want you to spend a little time right now, like no time like the present, and make sure that you are doing what you can so that you are putting yourself in the best position to heal quickly. In the future, years from now, if you start building this from now and anything should happen to you again, heaven forbid, you're going to have a better built brand. You probably are going to have a better network. You're probably going to have a lot more you can showcase and you're going to get snatched up quickly should you ever lose your job. So first thing I want to tell you is get the brand in order. And then the second thing related to that is I have I have a lot of detail out there. I it was a it was a special event that I held a few months back, and I've left it up there on my YouTube channel. Kara can drop it in the can drop it in the in in in, in the chat, and um, and you can you can you can you can you can check that out. All right, that's the first one. Second thing, this is gonna make all the difference in the world, and in mere seconds, you can change somebody's opinion about you not only in relation to you but in relation to others so i got a little something here about influence i like to call can you change the temperature in the room okay can you change the temperature in the room i got a final story for you here kind of made me a little nostalgic i used to uh the second friday oh hey happy halloween mm. second friday of every month like clockwork five o'clock at five o'clock i and a handful of buddies about eight ten or a dozen sometimes um, like like a crew we uh we got together and you know the snacks and the cocktails and, and and the cigars and we would get together wonderful guys entrepreneurs just just salt of the earth kind of people 
And some for a, a period of time, we met in this one guy's office, which was actually a house that was renovated uh, into an office. It was just awesome. He's a real estate guy. And upstairs, he had this lounge room. It was like a, a old style Chicago bungalow. Up at the top, he had this big long conference table. We used to sit around the table and talk. But you'd go up the stairs and into the room. But it was a, not a big room, but it was plenty of room for 10, 12 guys. So when I would walk up the stairs, if there were a handful of guys there, let's say there were 10 guys and they were all talking to each other, having their little side conversations or whatever, as soon as I would walk up the stairs, you would hear this big roar like, Ugh! you know, just, just the reactions, the screams, the smile, and they'd all stop what they're doing because they walked in the room. And that was the way that they reacted. So this goes on for a, a number of months, and this one guy, Jerry, he, he says, to, to super guy, super smart, kind of quiet, great, great, interesting person. And I walked in one day, all the guys roared, and then Jerry looked around and says, how come when I come in, you guys, you, you just say, hey, but when Andy walks in, you roar. And, and Mike said, well, it's Andy. You know, you know something funny is going to come out of his mouth, or at a minimum, he's going to give you a hug. Either way, it makes you want to roar. Okay, that's what I'm talking about. Now, I don't want you walking into an interview and, 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 and getting, the, getting the interviewers to roar or getting on a Zoom session and getting them to roar. But you can, you can, do you actually change the temperature in the room? Now, that works both ways, right? You might be in a room where everybody's strung out. You want to bring them, you want to, bring them to cooler heads. But for the most part, are you immediately engaging and to, is somebody magnetically connected to you? Now, you do not have to be a uh, total extrovert, all that good stuff, yelling and screaming. I had this uh, little work example here. I, I think I told this one a while back, but we had this job candidate. He was a recruit of ours at Mile Walk, and he was, he's a sales executive. Now, my client, Joanna, she worked for the software organization. They had been looking for a number of months for salespeople. They'd interviewed like a couple dozen people, and she would always do this. She would always try it out on her own, and then she would call me, and she'd say, okay, we need, we need, we need you to help us. So I get this guy, Jason, and he and I were preparing, and he was having his first phone call. Okay, it's way, way before COVID. So phone calls were common, and he gets on the phone, and he says, Hey, Joanna, so great. I'm so great to talk to you. I'm really looking forward to talking to you. Andy said a bunch of nice things, and I'm, I'm really excited about the opportunity. Just something of, of, of that nature. About a couple hours later, all done, I ca call Joanna. We're going to debrief on the session. And she says to me, Andy, in five seconds, I knew I was going to hire this guy. Now, we'll go through the formality of interviewing him, and we'll go through the full process. But by the end of the, by the, end of the call, I was totally sold. But it was just confirming. The, the, the next 55 minutes were just confirming what I knew in the first five seconds or five minutes. How does that happen? She just interviewed 24 people. Right over the course of months, and in one in one second, she knows that this guy's her guy. That's what I'm talking about. Do you change the temperature? This is so important that you do this. If you want more on this, I did a session on how to build rapport in a job interview. I strongly suggest you check that out because it'll help you change the temperature. Don't misread this. I'm talking about do you elevate do you elevate the sentiment of the person who you are actually interacting with the moment it starts, the moment you walk in the literal or figurative room? Could be the Zoom room, okay? All right, number three. Let's talk about patterns. Now, I'm talking about standing out, right? We all got these patterns. We all watch. We all, are, we all grow accustomed to what we're seeing. Well, I want to talk to you about patterns, brand blindness, and being a zebra. I, I couldn't write it in white because I'm on my white on my white note cards, but I wrote I wrote zebra there in in orange and, and black for Halloween. Uh, but this is this is this is what I'm talking about. Can you stand out of the crowd? Now, having a nice brand is going to help you do that, right? Raising the temperature in the room is going to do that, but can you actually stand out? So what are, what are, what are we what are we talking about here? Well, think of anything. Okay, I'm, I'm, I happen to be wearing a black sweatshirt today. It's a little cold in the house, but don't you often see me in colored shirts? Often, any of you that follow me on 
Instagram or LinkedIn or even the YouTube videos, right? I'm wearing orange. I'm wearing yellow. I'm wearing white. I'm wearing pale blue. I'm wearing dark blue. I'm wearing red. I don't particularly like any of those colors for clothes. Okay, why do I wear them? So that when the, when you're scrolling in your feed, you're like, hey, there's Annie in the blue shirt. There's Annie in the yellow shirt. There's Annie in the orange shirt. I mean, that must be a different video. It must be a different video, not Andy in a black shirt, Andy in a black shirt, Andy in a black shirt with a white heading or a black heading or a whatever. Right? I have to stand out from myself. Okay, how about all those other career coaches that are scrolling in your feed or all the umpteen other things that you see scrolling in your feed, right, on, on social media? Okay, we in the biz call that brand blindness. If I keep using the same picture, you're going to you're gonna think it's the same thing if I keep using a similar picture. Why do you think I got to keep changing up my quote cards and my colors and my, those kind of things? So, so, so that's what I'm talking about. Now, I've used this this zebra example. Why did I come up with the zebra thing? Well, I, I, I used this once about a month ago. I'm going to use it again. So, if, if you heard this, indulge me. But I live in in Long Grove, Illinois, Chicago land area in the United States, and it's you know it's flat, it's cold, whatever, and and. So when I, when I run out my front door and I run down the road and I run down the street on my run, I see the goats and the chickens and the, and the dogs running around and you got the pretty birds. And then over on the other side, I got the horses and, 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 and some of the other animals. And if I hear hoofbeats, I'm immediately going to think horses. But I do not technically rule out the possibility that it could be a zebra. Okay, so that's what I'm talking about. When you get into these job interviews, when you send your uh, resume into the applicant tracking system, you're a horse, right? It's all the horses. There. The stampede is coming in. And, and when you're interviewing somebody, if your stories sound the same, if you're using the same techniques, if you're using the stupid star method, if you're doing all that stuff, you're a horse. I need you to be a zebra. Okay, now wait, I got some great news here because if anything like how am I going to be a zebra is running through your head, I'm here to tell you happy days. The world has made it so easy on you to be a zebra. Why? Because the bar is so low because no one does anything extra, right? It's so, it's so simple to tell better stories. I've given you, I've given you all, all, all the packaging, right? Everything everybody does makes sense to them. You need to disrupt that pattern. You need to tell the story better, faster, more packaged. How about this one? How about grab the card? Hey, dear Andy, thank you so much for your time at the interview. I really am excited about your organization and hope I get to join. But... No matter how this turns out, I'm really glad we met and I hope we can stay in touch. Signed on my handwritten card, Mr. Zebra. Zoom, you're a zebra, right? Like anything that you can do that breaks a pattern. No one sends a handwritten card. People say, well, you know, I can't mail it to them. Everybody's working from home. Who cares? Who cares? Send, ask them on the Zoom session. Hey, I'd love to follow up and drop something in the mail for you. Where's the place I would send it so you'd get it the, uh, the quickest, right? Can you just take one extra step to be a zebra? Okay, that's what I'm talking about. Everything they see is a pattern, right? What's another silly example? Right, when you watch TV, if you actually watch a commercial show, what happens the moment a commercial comes on? The volume goes up. Why? They have to interrupt you to know, hey, I need you to tap, tap. I need to pay attention to me. It's the same kind of thing. You gotta, you gotta figure out ways, little extra ways to stand out from the crowd. What's another way you can be a zebra? Send a boss hunting cover letter instead of putting your resume in an applicant tracking system. You're a zebra. Okay, that's what I'm talking about. So you've got to think, how can I stand out? But you don't need to do anything crazy. You don't need to do anything crazy. And the other thing that I would say about being a zebra is not just about having the different stripes. It's about being consistent and consistently doing it differently. Okay, now I'm not saying go send a handwritten card to everybody who you have a phone screen with. I'm talking about as you get into the interviewing process and you start to develop a little rapport and relationship with these people. Are you getting closer to them? Do your boss hunting stuff, things like that. So the other thing uh, that you can do, let me uh, use the prop. Grab, grab interview intervention, right? We still give this out free everywhere in the world. You immediately get the ebook and the audiobook, but we, and we, we, we toss the hardbound 
in the mail. Hey, what a concept. I could give you an ebook. Giving you this makes me a zebra, right? But inside here, we'll make you a zebra. Okay, that one just came to me. I don't know. Anyway, go with me on this, people. Okay, I know, I know, I know some of my cor jokes are corny. What do I got next? Attitude, baby. Attitude. All right, people in my leadership program, you know about this. What do I always say, right? Dealing with unexpected change, dealing with things you don't like, dealing with people you don't like. What can I do with this right now? These eight words should be, you should tattoo this on your, actually my wife just got a new tattoo. Um, her first one, by the way. Uh, anyway, what can I do with this right now? What am I talking about? All right, every single thing that we do in our efforts, in anything that we do, but let's the job searching stuff, right? You send an email out and nobody responds. What can you do? You can do two things. You can follow up if you want, or you can send you can send an additional message to somebody else, which is what I would do. Okay, you you send a message. They say thanks, but no thanks. What can I do with this right now? They got back to me. Yay! The goal of sending a message is to get somebody to respond. It is not to get a job interview. It's to get somebody to respond. First things first. Okay, sorry, we don't have any positions available. Boom, what can you do with this? I can get back to them. I can ask them for referrals. I could ask them if there are any other things in their organization. I can ask them if they can keep me in mind. I can ask them to connect on LinkedIn. I can ask them a million things to keep the chain going. You go into an interview. You don't get the job because they gave it to somebody else. Okay, what can you do? You can go and watch my video on how to get the job after being rejected. And you could send the classy script so that you put yourself in the best light. They think you're a total class act. You tee yourself up to call them 30 days later and so on. I, as a recruiter, here's a great one. We often would call people, cold call them, right? The days of LinkedIn, we, didn't, we weren't really using that stuff. And I would call people or even if we email them. But call people, get them on the phone. We're talking, maybe we're interviewing them, maybe we're developing a relationship and maybe they're not the right fit for the job or maybe they're not interested in what we're peddling. And I say, hey, do you know anybody um, that I could reach out to about this? Referrals, right? And their reaction was, oh, I don't know anybody who's looking. That's not what I asked. I asked you if you knew any, I'm looking for anybody who's qualified regardless of whether they're looking. What can I do with that right now? Somebody said no to me or they weren't really putting any energy into helping me. What did I do? I had to change their mindset. I had to educate them on what I really was looking for or I had to give them a different prompter, right? So every single time, what can I do? What can I do? What can I do with this right now? You spend more time looking forward you're gonna have a lot better results. You spend a lot of time wallowing about why somebody didn't get back to you it's not going to be good for your results in anything in your life, but especially not in job searching. Don't carry that weight with you. Be light and breezy on your feet. Okay, so so you 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 get what I'm saying. The attitude of positive positivity is in the action. Your, first, your grat gratitude. The, you're grateful they got back to you. They're grateful that they interviewed you. They're grateful that they took the time and all that good stuff. All right, great. Now, what can you do in the wake of this? to keep the chain going and positively, whatever it might be, what can I do with this right now? I, I've told this story about uh, one of my job search boot campers, Stephanie, and she was sending out a resume. It wasn't really working. She got in the boot camp, revamped it. She's got a much, had a much better resume. She wanted to have a coaching session. I said, okay, Let's, let's take this resume, let's take this sucker for a test spin. And I'll tell you what, come to the coaching meeting with me, identify 10 target companies, and then what I would do is let's, let me know who they are, whether they're, she's in sales, whether they were chief operating officers, heads of sales, senior vice president of this, whatever it was, sometimes CEO, right, if it was a smaller company. I said, let's, let's, Let's send this out. Let's use the boss hunting technique. Some had openings, some didn't have openings. We send out these 10, 10 messages on Monday. So, okay, we're gonna reconvene. We'll, we'll check in on Friday and see how your results go. And she, she had a number of uh, people, uh, two people didn't get back to her. Three of them offered her interviews. She went three for 10 in the first shot. Five of them got back to her, said, no, thank you. 
but I was already planning for what I would do for the no thank yous because the dead silence, the only next step is you can follow up with them. But if somebody comes back with a rejection, what could I do with a rejection right now? Well, I could go back to them with a script that says, as you can see, I'm job searching, blah, 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 referrals, this and that. She got two more interviews. So basically, she sent 10 initial stimulants of interest. Out they went. And of that five-day span, in the course of the five days, she got three interviews. And then the five of them that came back with referrals, she got two more. So within two weeks, she had five interviews. What can I do with this right now? It didn't take her any time. We prepped all that. Right? Hit the button. Boom. Thank you so much. Here you go. Here's my, here's my next script. They got back to her. Some didn't get back to her. So what? Right? That's what I'm talking about. Just put it on a post-it. You don't have to tattoo it on your wrist like my wife did. Okay? All right. Enough of that. Now, I want to I wanna end with faith. And you're going to need to draw on this. But I know this to be true. And you'll only know this in hindsight. Your job search is one effort. And whatever happened along the way had to happen that way. Whatever has happened to you brought you to me. And I'm, I'm damn happy about that. Okay? But I want you to stop if you are thinking about your job search as a series of events, you need to stop that. Bad, bad mistake, okay? Your job search is one big, I mean this in a positive way, black box. You start and then you finish and a whole bunch of stuff happens in the middle, all right? You send some messages out, people don't get back to you. You send some other messages out, they get back to you, then they don't get back to you. You send some other messages out, you get some interviews. You get some interviews, you don't get some jobs. Off they go, right? And then, boop, out, out, out the other end comes the job that you want. Now, all this stuff in here had to happen. Every time you got a rejection, bang, that's a pawn getting moved off the chessboard, okay? That's all it is, nothing more. What can I do with that right now? What did I learn from that? They gave me feedback in the interview that I didn't have enough experience in this area, but I did. Okay, well, you know what? Good for you. That one wasn't for you, but they pointed out a flaw in your interviewing technique, which you're now going to carry. I don't know if I told you about Priya. Priya hired me. She didn't want to do any video. Andy, I just want you to coach me, and I know I'm going to be interviewing with a whole bunch of great brand companies. She interviewed with in no particular order. Facebook twice, Google twice, Oracle, Pinterest, Twitter, a few, a few SAP, few others. Ended up taking a job with Apple, okay? I prepped her before she went into every major round with all these companies. And we'd go through it and then she would debrief me and she would, she would email me and she would say, okay, here's what happened. Can we have a session? Because I have to go meet with whoever. And every single time we would laugh together, cut, we want to make it fun, right? Because she would say, I know you prepped me to do that. And they asked me this, which was a variation. And I got all tongue tied and I, I lost it. Oh, that's okay. That one wasn't for you. And ends up getting a job with Apple. Been out of work for three months. You know, big time job. But still, my point is, I had to keep reinforcing for her. That was nothing. You didn't even want to work for that company. You don't even care. Right kind of thing. But it hurt her ego. So, but my point is, pawns getting moved off the chat. You should have heard her squeal with glee. The phone call that I got when she got the job with Apple. Right? I knew it. I know you kept telling me to have faith. And you were right. That's right. It had to happen that way. The problem with you right now is you can't see it until it's in the wake, right? Until you have that job. And so the, when you look at that job that you really thought you wanted, but they didn't hire you, and you were so mad that you lost two night, you know, two weeks worth of sleep, and then you got this job, and you're like, good thing I didn't take that other job, right? That's going to happen. It's going to happen if you have faith. It's all one effort. It's all one effort. All right, let's recap it up. I hope these creeds help you. Prelude, get the brand in order. Influence, raise the temperature in the room. 
pattern, be a zebra, break it, okay? Have the right attitude, what can I do with this right now? And have faith, it's one major effort all tied together. Now, let me leave you with one thing that I hope you jump into. I have got a five day in a row free. We're gonna be 90 minutes a day. Job search challenge, November 16th through the 20th. So if you are here with me now, get into that. That's five great days in a row. And if you are in my job search boot camp, then every day after the 90 minutes, we're gonna have cocktail hour, and then we're gonna have a we're gonna have a private session for just the boot campers Monday through Thursday, and then we got another one the week of Thanksgiving. So check that out because that job search challenge will inherently do a lot of those five things for you. Now the attitude is is kind of dialed into the job search challenge and having faith you'll start to see the mechanics of this and how it's working together. But get your brand in order and 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 you will be uh, you will be breaking patterns with the techniques that I'll be teaching you. That's free. Five days. I'm with you every day of the week. We'll do it here on YouTube. All right. Hope you enjoyed that.